Reary at the White House Rose Garden. This will give the Thank president the time to publicly comment on the critical health care vote concluded just a moment Please. ago to proceed with debate. Here's the president. I'm very happy to announce that with zero of the Democrats' votes, the motion to proceed on health care has just passed. And now we move forward towards truly great health care for the American people. We look forward to that. This was a big step. I want to thank Senator John McCain, very brave man. He made a tough trip to get here and vote. So we want to thank Senator McCain and all of the Republicans. We passed it without one Democrat vote. And that's a shame, but that's the way it is. And it's uh, very unfortunate. But I want to congratulate American people because we're going to give you great health care. And we're going to get rid of Obamacare, which should have been, frankly, terminated long ago. It's been a disaster for the American people. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And thank you all for being here. It is my honor to welcome Prime Minister Saad Hariri of Lebanon to the White House. The Prime Minister and I have just concluded an extensive conversation about the challenges and opportunities facing Lebanon and its neighbors. Lebanon is on the front lines in the fight against ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Hezbollah. The Lebanese people of all faiths are working together to keep their country, and you know this, and we've been discussing this at great length, their country safe and prosperous. They love their country, and they're going to keep it safe and prosperous. Mr. Prime Minister, I want to commend you and your people for standing up for humanity in a very troubled part of the world. The ties between our two countries stretch back more than a century. Long, long relationships. In 1866, American missionaries founded the American University of Beirut. Now, more than 150 years later, and with ongoing American support, this university continues to educate generations of leaders in the region. Today, our two countries seek to strengthen our relationship in many ways including the pursuit of stability, mutual prosperity, and peace. What the Lebanese Armed Forces have accomplished in recent years is very impressive. In 2014, when ISIS tried to invade northern Lebanon, the Lebanese Army beat them back. Since that time, the Lebanese Army has been fighting continually to guard Lebanon's border and prevent ISIS and other terrorists, of which there are many, from gaining a foothold inside their country. The United States military has been proud to help in that fight and will continue to do so. America's assistance can help ensure that the Lebanese Army is the only defender Lebanon needs. It's a very effective fighting force. Threats to the Lebanese people come from inside as well. Hezbollah is a menace to the Lebanese state, the Lebanese people, and the entire region. The group continues to increase its military arsenal, which threatens to start yet another conflict with Israel, constantly fighting them back. With the support of Iran, the organization is also fueling humanitarian catastrophe in Syria. Hezbollah likes to portray itself as a defender of Lebanese interests, but it's very clear that its true interests are those of itself and its sponsor, Iran. I have repeatedly emphasized that Syria's neighbors in the Middle East must take responsibility for helping Syrian refugees until they can return home and rebuild their country. The Lebanese people have led the way, accepting more Syrian refugees per capita than any other nation. It's not even close. I want to thank the Prime Minister and the Lebanese people for giving shelter to those victimized by ISIS, the Assad regime, and their supporters and sponsors, and pledge our continued 
support to Lebanon. Since the start of the Syrian crisis, the United States has helped Lebanon support Syrian refugees with clean water, food, shelter, and health care. Our approach, supporting the humanitarian needs of displaced Syrian, Syrian citizens as close to their home country as possible, is the best way to help most people. America is proud to stand with those who have the courage to stand up to terrorism and take responsibility for affairs in their own region. The reliance and resilience of the Lebanese people in the face of war and terror is extraordinary. We honor the citizens of Lebanon who are working to secure a future of peace, stability, and prosperity for their children. Mr. Prime Minister, I'm grateful that you're here today. It's a big day in our country because of the vote that you just heard about. <laughs> we stood and watched the results on television before coming out, Absolutely. and you found it very interesting, I hope. Yes, I did. And very important. I look forward to working with you to strengthen our partnership and the enduring friendship between the American and Lebanese peoples. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Good afternoon. I had the honor and pleasure, and the pleasure to hold a very uh, good meeting uh, with President Trump. After meeting Trump. with the uh, Lebanese Prime Minister now, they are making brief statements what will happen. And we've seen this United on numerous States occasions with visiting heads of today. state. They will each take questions, a couple of questions, from the local region, U.S. media and, and the, the foreign media. And we expect that to Lebanon happen in a few minutes after this statement. We do need to catch you up. The president began his remarks noting the vote in the U.S. Senate just a short time ago, the vice president breaking the tie, allowing this procedural vote to go forward, uh, allowing debate to now go forward, if you will, on uh, repealing, perhaps replacing uh, Obamacare. That remains to be seen, but it will now move forward. Let's go to Peter Alexander, who can perhaps talk about what may happen next year. Peter? You know, what's striking is it was John McCain's return back to Washington, a place where he has served for decades, ultimately, that put this over the top. A 50-50 tie, as you noted, that was then broken by the Republican, the Vice President, Mike Pence. But in effect, all they did today was decide that they're going to continue this conversation. This was a last-ditch effort by Republicans, the president himself pushing for it on Twitter and in a series of public comments as well, basically saying to his Republican allies in the Senate, if you don't allow this conversation to go forward, basically you're saying you're not willing to support Americans who are being devastated in his eyes by Obamacare. But even as John McCain himself said in those remarks that could be cast as a sort of roar from a Senate lion, uh, the fact of the matter is it's unclear what happens next. McCain says the bill that exists in the Senate right now to repeal and replace Obamacare is one that he would not support. So make no mistake, this doesn't mean that there is a bill that exists right now that has the necessary support. It just means that the Republican senators are now willing to give it a try, notably McCain calling for bipartisanship, the president quickly bashing Democrats. All right, let's go back to the Rose Garden right now where the president and prime minister are taking also. questions. Just a second, if you'll bear with me. Um, you spoke earlier today of the Wall Street Journal. We've all seen those comments, but I think everybody here probably is hoping uh, that you could talk a little bit more about this. Uh, you have called your attorney general beleaguered. You've criticized his decision to recuse himself on the Russia matters. Uh, and your kind of catchphrase or motto before the White House was, you're fired. So I'm wondering if you would talk to us a little bit about whether you've lost confidence in Jeff Sessions, whether you want him to resign on his own, um, whether you're prepared to fire him if he doesn't, and, and why you're sort of letting him twist in the wind rather than just making the call for him. Thank you. Well, I don't think I am doing that, but I am disappointed in the attorney general. Uh, he should not have recused himself almost immediately after he took office. And if he was going to recuse himself, he should have told me prior to taking office, and I would have quite simply picked somebody else. Uh, so I think that's a bad thing, not for the president, but for the presidency. I think it's unfair to the presidency, and uh, that's the way I feel. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, um, 
Could you tell us what you think about the Saudi-led uh, blockade of Qatar? Uh, this is something that has been of great concern to the U.S. also in terms of resolving. Do you think that Qatar is doing enough uh, on terror? And if so, uh, would you like to see President Trump uh, increase the pressure on the Saudi coalition to ease its blockade? And Mr. President, uh, if you would give us any more of your thinking on going forward the path with Attorney General Sessions and maybe your timeline for making a decision, that would be great. Thank you. You don't give up. That's okay. Thank you. I think uh, there is an effort by the Kuwaitis. Uh, they're leading this effort. I think, uh, and I think they made some progress. We believe that dialogue is the best way in uh, improving this relationship between Saudi Arabia and Qatar. I believe that uh, maybe the United States also uh, could help in this uh, so in solving this uh, issue uh, in the Gulf. Uh, Denise. I have one question for the President and also for Prime Minister. Congress inter introduced additional sanctions against Hezbollah last week. What is your position towards these sanctions and on the role of Hezbollah is playing in the region and uh, Syria? I'll be making my position very clear over the next 24 hours. Uh, we're going to see what is exactly taking place. I have meetings with some of my very expert uh, military representatives and others, so I'll be making that decision very shortly. Okay? Thank and about you. his role in Syria and the region? Whose role? Hezbollah's role. Uh, I'll be talking about that tomorrow. Prime Minister, what is the Lebanese government on the Congress of America to the sanctions on Hezbollah? لطالما تعاوننا باي موضوع من الفرض فرض علينا عقوبات او على على البنوك اللبنانيه وتعاون بين المصرف لبنان وهذه العقوبات نحن حنستكمل يعني هذه التعاون نحن عم عم نقوم باتصالات بالكونغرس كمان ايضا حيكون عندي عده جولات بالكونغرس لحتى نقدر نوصل الى تفاهم بالنسبه Indulge us here for a second, just to pick up where Margaret. The American people, I think, would like to know, do you feel uh, that the Attorney General should indeed stay and he intend on uh, Why should he remain as the Attorney General? And secondly, uh, on a separate topic, with the health care vote that just came about, still a long ways to go. At what point do you feel that Republicans, if they can't get something done, should just say, you know what, we gave it a go, let's move on to tax reform instead? Thank you. I want the Attorney General to be much tougher on the leaks from intelligence agencies, which are leaking like rarely have they ever leaked before at a very important level. These are intelligence agencies. We cannot have that happen. Uh, you know many of my views in addition to that, but I think that's one of the very important things that they have to get on with. Uh, I told you before I'm very disappointed with the Attorney General, uh, but we will see what happens. Time will tell. Time will tell. On health care, I'm extremely happy uh, that we got this vote. This is, they say, if you look historically, this is the tough vote to get. Now we're all going to sit together and we're going to try and come up with something that's really spectacular. We have a lot of options and a lot of great options. And the Republican senators really went out there. It's not easy when you have 52 senators and you have a block of 48 voting against you. No matter what it is, no matter how good it sounds, it's very hard to get the kind of numbers that we got. We ended up with 51 votes, 51 to whatever. I don't know what it is. Yeah, 51 to 50. So we had two Republicans that went against us, which is very sad, I think. It's very, very sad for them. But uh, I'm very, very happy with uh, the result. I believe now we will, over the next week or two, come up with a plan that's going to be really, really wonderful for the American people. Obamacare is a disaster. It's failing on every front. 
It's too expensive. It gives horrible coverage. It was gotten by a lie 28 times. It was a lie. You can keep your doctor. You can keep your plan. All lies. And the people are sick of it. And we're going to come up with a great health care that satisfies the needs of the people that we serve, which is the people of the United States. I will say, and I said it right at the beginning, health care is always difficult because you have to weed a very, very narrow path, like a quarter of an inch wide, right down the middle. And if you go a little bit too far right, you lose three people on the left. And if you go a little bit too far left, you lose five people on the right. It is a very, very complex and difficult task. But it's something I actually know quite a bit about. I want to just thank some of the Republican senators who were really fantastic in getting us here, particularly John McCain for making the trip. Uh, but I think you're going to have a great health care. This is the beginning of the end for the disaster known as Obamacare. Thank you very much. And, uh, Mr. President. Sean. Uh, Mr. President, uh, how can the United States help Lebanon cope with the massive number of refugees, of Syrian refugees, and is there a way you can help facilitate the refugees' return to their home country? Well, we are helping, and one of the things that we have made tremendous strides at is getting rid of ISIS. We have uh, generals that don't like to talk, or they like to do, and we were with General Mattis last night, and the success they've had against ISIS is extraordinary. We've made more progress in the last four or five months than previous — really, I could say the previous administration made in eight years. And then we have to see what we have to see. But I will tell you, ISIS in Syria, ISIS in Iraq, ISIS in other locations, uh, we have made tremendous strides. Our military is an incredible fighting force. And as you know, I let the commanders on the ground do what they had to do. Before, they used to have to call in this beautiful house and speak to people that didn't know what was happening, where they were, what locations we're talking about, or the towns. I let the generals do what they had to do. And we have made tremendous plans. We were discussing it just before. We have made tremendous gains with respect to ISIS in Syria, Iraq, and other places. Thank you. Thank you. What about Bashar al-Assad in Syria? Assad? Assad. Uh, I'm not a fan of Assad, okay? How you will he act, will tell you, you that, because we hit yeah. we had 58 out of 58. Or you could even say 59 out of 59 when we launched the Tomahawk missiles. No, I am not a fan of Assad. I certainly think that what he's done to that country and to humanity is horrible. So I have been saying that for a long time. I am not somebody that uh, will stand by and let him get away with what he tried to do. And he did it a number of times when President Obama drew the red line in the sand. And then he should have crossed that red line because some horrible acts against humanity took place, including gas and the killing through gases. Uh, that was a bad day for this country. And I'd go a step further that had President Obama gone across that line and done what he should have done. I don't believe you'd have Russia, and I don't believe you'd have Iran to anywhere near the extent, and maybe not at all, in Syria today. Okay? Thank you very much. حكي كثير عن خفض الميزانية ميزانية الدعم الأمريكية للبنان بعد اللقاءات اللي عملتوها هل أنتم مطمئنين لاستمرار هذا الدعم خصوصي للجيش اللبناني؟ نحن مطمئنين إن شاء الله وكان في حوار واضح وصريح مع فخامة الرئيس وإن شاء الله الدعم للجيش اللبناني حيكمل uh, again, bear with us here. Uh, apparently, there was not a uh, White House issue with the uh, Arabic translation into English. 
وان شاء الله ونش... يعني هيدا شيء بالجيش والجيش الامريكي والجيش اللبناني هن اللي بيقرروا بنوع الاسلحه ونوع التمر... التدريبات اللي هن بحاجه لهم شكرا Thank you very much everybody appreciate it thank you thank, thank you, you so much Mr Prime Minister thank you President Trump and the uh, Prime Minister Hariri of Lebanon concluding a joint news conference, each taking a couple of questions uh, from the uh, visiting and uh, American media here. Uh, the headlines in terms of what the president said uh, had to do with his attorney general, Jeff Sessions. He continued to express his disappointment. Uh, no noting uh, that he didn't believe, among other things, that he had targeted the issue of leaks in an adequate way. But in the words of one of the reporters there, he appears to be leaving the uh, attorney general twisting in the wind with a series of comments questioning his performance. Hallie Jackson is there in the Rose Garden and has more for us. Hallie? Uh, Lester, if Jeff Sessions was twisting in the wind prior to this news conference, the responses from President Trump didn't do much to resolve that for him. You heard the president say of Sessions' future, time will tell, nothing definitive one way or the other, reiterating that he is disappointed in Jeff Sessions for not recusing himself from that Russia investigation, uh, from that special counsel discussion, or for recusing himself, given his role on the campaign. The president making very explicit on camera now, Lester, what he first told the New York Times last week which is that had he known the attorney general would have recused himself, he would have simply picked somebody else. That was the dominant theme, as we expected, of the questions from American media here at this press conference, Lester. You heard President Trump also talk a bit about that very uh, crucial health care news, the moving forward on the motion to proceed, essentially debate starting now on a bill to potentially repeal and replace Obamacare, although there are a lot of questions about what the actual bill will entail, and a couple of shout-outs to Senator John McCain. But again, the headline, I think, Lester, coming out of this, news conference today. The future of Jeff Sessions as attorney general is still very much in question. All right, Hallie, let's go to our justice correspondent, Pete Williams. This is his wheelhouse, uh, the issues of the attorney general. Where does this leave him and, and what happens going forward? What are the real options here as the president continues to express his disappointment in the AG? Well, you can be sure that the attorney general is watching to see what the president said, but the president didn't really advance the ball any further, simply repeating what he said before about the attorney general. Uh, the attorney general has no intention of resigning. Uh, he's obviously been very disappointed, somewhat hurt by the president's comments, we're told by those close to him. But uh, there's been an interesting sort of response from the president's own conservative base, kind of rallying around the attorney general here. Uh, saying the president shouldn't fire him. There was a column in the National Review online today saying that, that, uh, that Mr. Uh, Sessions should not resign, that he should tough it out. Uh, I think the feeling at the Justice Department is that perhaps uh, this t Twitter obsession of the president's may pass and that he can get on with it if he can just tough it out. That's where things stand right now. In terms of this recusal issue, which the president brought up today, uh, in the minds of many in and out of the Justice Department, Jeff Sessions really had no choice. The Justice Department rules say that a prosecutor should not oversee an investigation if he was involved politically with someone being investigated. And Sessions was such a key part of the Trump campaign, he really had no choice. And by the way, if the president were to choose Rudy Giuliani to take over for Sessions, Giuliani would have the same problem. So I think Mr. Sessions would like to stay in the job and, and hopes that the president will move on to something else to tweet about. All right. Uh, Pete Williams, thank you very much. And the other news, as we noted, uh, made in the hour, the Senate voting to proceed now with debate on the issue of health care. The outcome certainly uncertain, as well as the options a bit uncertain. Let's bring in Casey Hunt right now. Casey, we heard the president say what he has said time and time and time again. Okay, Obamacare is a disaster, and we're going to give you great health care. That doesn't really sketch out a lot. What, what could happen now as, as they move forward? Well, Lester, Republican leaders came out here and called this the first step in what is still a long road to repeal and replace Obamacare. And that's really uh, where things stand here. There's a little bit of a state of confusion about how Republicans will proceed next. Today, of course, very dramatic, very emotional. John McCain, a war hero, uh, now battling brain cancer, got a very emotional reception. Uh, from both sides of the aisle, really. His wife, Cindy McCain, also here uh, in the Senate. He made that flight uh, from Phoenix, landed here, and cast uh, what ended up being a deciding vote here, this 51-50 to 50 vote 
uh, Vice President Mike Pence, of course, breaking the tie. But all this does is get them to start talking. And the next thing uh, is going to be a series of amendments. They know that they don't have the votes to repeal Obamacare without offering a replacement for Obamacare. But they've really struggled to get the votes for that as well. And so uh, I think you're going to see that play out on the Senate floor over the course of the next uh, few days. There are discussions now ongoing about maybe uh, doing something a little bit smaller in scope, repealing a few pieces uh, of Obamacare. But of course, uh, even that would be an extremely long process. They'd have to go back uh, to the House of Representatives. So again, Lester, this really just the beginning of this Republican effort. All right. Casey Hunt at the Capitol. Thanks very much. Let me bring in NBC's Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, two storylines here. The Attorney General on the ropes. Indeed. And we're watching this health care drama play out with no really certain certainty as to where it's going. What are your thoughts today? Well, this is extraordinary. The drama of John McCain does bring to mind, of course, in 2008, Ted Kennedy with the same terrible brain disease, the same kind of tumor coming back heroically to vote for Medicare, uh, for a Medicare bill. Officers. And now we see John McCain with his own so ailment voting to get it on the floor, but I saying and chastising his colleagues, this is not who we are. <laughs> Ignore the pundits it's on cable, on television, on the situation. Internet. They're bullies uh, to hell with them. He was very blunt, saying, "This is not one of our great moments. We've not had very many great moments, very re you know, recently, and we haven't gotten anything done except the confirmation of the Supreme Court justice." So he said, "Let's get to work and let's actually do this in hearings. Let's go to regular order." So he's not going to vote for any of the options, the repeal option or any of the other options that are now on the floor. And this, his main argument was it was done in secret. It was not done with committee work. He wants to get back to the Senate as the deliberative body that it was historically a poignant moment for John McCain to come. It's controversial because he's voting for something that he doesn't like, the chance to at least have the vote on the floor. So he's following the leadership, but he is not going to vote for any of the options. And he is definitely uh, say, speaking, excuse me, very bluntly. To his colleagues. All right. Andrea Mitchell, yes, thanks. And we should note that uh, Senator McCain getting a sustained ovation as he entered the chambers today and at the conclusion of his speech. Clearly good to see him uh, among his colleagues there. You can find full coverage on MSNBC and on NBCnews.com. A complete wrap up coming up this evening on NBC Nightly News. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Have a good day.